This video is sponsored by Let's Get Checked. Just about every male identifying human wants more testosterone. And some new first of its kind research out of Chicago looks at certain popular diets and tries to see if any of them correlate with notably high or low male sex hormone levels. Lo and behold, there was one notable correlation. The lead author on this study was Dr. Jake Fantas, a sixth year urology resident at the University of Chicago. And when he was in college, he was a personal trainer. Don't judge, I asked him to do that. I like a good gun show. But before we talk about the research, let's talk about why it matters. I've read the internet, and my understanding is that high testosterone will make me jacked and better at sex. Do I have that right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's not too far from the truth. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, there, 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 are, there are definitely some caveats to that. But yeah, sure. I, I do think people that have higher testosterone have a much easier time putting on muscle, keeping off uh, fat, um, and certainly does affect uh, men's libido and even uh, erectile function. Now, the real question is, you know, at so what point do you kind of cap out? The normal range for testosterone in a grown man starts at about 300 nanograms per deciliter of blood. If you go much lower than that, you start to have the kind of serious health problems that Dr. Fantas was mentioning, and worse, things like infertility, bone loss, depression. Your doctor might even want to put you on supplementation, testosterone replacement therapy, TRT. The real question you're asking is if you have 400 versus 600 versus 800, are you really going to feel any different? And that's kind of hard to answer. That's actually somewhat uh, different from individual to individual. I would say overall, people with a little bit higher testosterone may feel a little bit better, but chances are if you have four or 500, you're not going to feel the difference between six or 700. 1,200, 1,500 super normal levels of testosterone given by supplementation, you may feel something, but obviously there are risks and benefits to that. Yeah, I believe supplementation here is a polite term for juicing. Sup, Jay? Been a long time. We should hang soon. All of this is to say that testosterone, or T as the bro scientists call it, T actually matters to men's health, not just our egos. But relatively minor differences in testosterone, like the ones we're about to talk about relative to diet, probably don't matter that much. Actually, that's not entirely true. Dr. Fanta says the research does show that really unhealthy diets, things that cause obesity, those are correlated with problematically low testosterone. From what the current literature suggested prior to the study is that diets that make you lose weight. If you are overweight or have uh, insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, diets that control those things certainly help your testosterone by helping you control your comorbidities. What we really didn't know is how diets themselves affected testosterone. And what I discovered is that men don't really need a low-fat diet of normal BMI, likely don't have improvements in testosterone by eating a low-fat diet. In fact, we saw a slight decrease in uh, testosterone in those men. Yep, you heard that right. According to this new study that looked at more than 3,000 men, a low-fat diet is actually correlated with slightly lower testosterone when you control for things like age, body composition, and activity levels. How is this possible? If you follow professional bodybuilding like I do for some reason, you'll know that until pretty recently, the standard bodybuilding diet was, well, let's hear it from South African bodybuilder Gary Stridham in this 19 I eat um, high carbohydrate, high protein diet, very low fat. So how does this guy have androgenic qualities in abundance despite eating nothing but steamed chicken breast and white rice? Well, I think we can be pretty assured in saying that there are some, shall we say, exogenous hormones at work there. Trying to learn fitness from a pro bodybuilder is like trying to learn home cooking from a pro chef. You ain't playing the same game. And if you're not going to get your hormones from a needle, you got to get them from food. The hypothesis is that fat is a, you know, a steroid precursor. And if you don't have enough building blocks like cholesterol for steroids, such as testosterone, uh, you may end up deficient in those areas. Fantas and his co-authors also tried to examine corollaries between low-carbohydrate diets and testosterone, but they couldn't find enough men who met their study criteria. I'll be pretty interested to see if he's able to do that work in the future. This also all made me pretty interested in what my testosterone levels are. I am, after all, a physically active yet frequently overindulging man who is rapidly careening toward 40. 
So enter the sponsor of this video, Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is a way for you to take control of your body and to do all kinds of medical tests yourself in the privacy of your home. It comes in discreet packaging with next day delivery. The instructions are very clear and very specific, just do whatever they say. A hormone test is gonna be a blood test and I was quite happy to find that they sent these spring-loaded lancets. I didn't have to work up the nerve to stab myself like I had to once in high school for bio class. All I had to do was push a button, hardly even hurt. You pack up your sample, you throw it in the mail, and you get your confidential results via a secure online account. You can share them with your doctor, but Let's Get Checked also has doctors and nurses who can go through your results with you. This is all legit. There are accredited medical professionals running this show. If you need to get checked for hormones or for all kinds of things, do us both a favor and hit my referral link that is down in the description. You'll get 20% off if you use my code ADAM20 at checkout. That's all down in the description. And what's my my testosterone? I'll tell you at the end of the video. For now, we've got a men's health expert in our midst, so let's do a little lightning round. I'm sure that Dr. Fantas would encourage all of us to eat a balanced diet, not too much or too little of anything. That said, if there's one macronutrient that's the problem in first world diets, it's probably the carbs, right? Yeah, and the reason, again, it would be the portion control. If you look at how many carbohydrates you're supposed to eat, People are on the like two, three hundred percent side of things. I don't, I don't think fats are bad at all. It's actually, I would argue, it's probably harder unless you're eating a bunch of dessert foods to get you know way too many fat calories. I mean, again, you could eat like a bunch of macaroni and cheese, but then a lot of those those calories are coming from the macaroni itself and not the cheese portion, the butter, the olive oil, anything you put into it. So I'd argue it's pretty hard to get that much fat without a bunch of desserts. I don't think that was a terribly controversial answer he gave just then. Here is a scientifically controversial issue. Are saturated fats actually bad for you? I can't say I'm completely sold on cutting all of those out of your diet. Honestly, the things I, do, I am sold on cutting out of your diet though are you know, a bunch of highly processed foods, preserved uh, foods, those things I think have been reproducibly shown to be bad. Transaturated, polyunsaturated. I mean, again, anything in moderation I think is, is not a problem, but uh, I don't have a specific reason to avoid those like the plague. Okay, here's one for the gents on the internet who like to use the epithet soy boy to describe anyone whom they regard as insufficiently masculine. Usually people who have committed grievous unmanly sins like considering other people's feelings and points of view. This one is for those guys. Will eating soy products actually cause my estrogen to go up? Estrogen, of course, being the female sex hormone that is present in all men to some degree. Gins. Uh, I, I have to say, I think, again, in moderation would probably be fine. I do think it's important uh, to diversify your, your, your proteins. Getting caseinates is super important. I do, not, I do not hate on soy at all. I do not think the uh, pro-estrogen and somewhat pro-inflammatory effects of that uh, outweigh the benefits of just having protein. So if you weren't going to have protein you have versus having soy protein, for sure soy protein is better than nothing. If you're going to have soy protein versus something else, again, I think diversifying it, like you talked about having a healthy balance, probably more important than just picking one source. But it wouldn't be my first choice if I had to pick one source. All right, last one. Can a man be healthy as a vegan? Absolutely. Uh, I do think supplementation is key or really picking out you know, good legumes and things that have high sources of uh, protein uh, help. But uh, I absolutely think you can be healthy as a vegan. It's definitely challenging though. All right, thank you, Dr. Fantas. Now, you're all no doubt wondering, what is this soy boy's testosterone? Well, 657 dead center in the middle of normal. I am bizarrely frustrated by this result. I mean, I think I was hoping that either I would have really high testosterone because that would mean that I was like, Arr! or I was hoping that I would have really low testosterone because that would mean that I could go to my doctor and seek treatment and potentially supplementation and that would make me feel like, Arr! but no, I'm just normal, which means this is as good as it's gonna get. If there's anything I don't like about my body or how I feel, it's probably because I eat too much junk. I'm gonna go hit myself on the head right now and try to wipe out any memory of that unfortunate fact. You do you, excuse me.